Hello and welcome to a new video. This video is about digital goods lenses. This video is a little unplanned because a lot of people were curious about what digital goods are, how you can use them and how to build a lens using digital goods. So let's start from the basics. What are digital goods lenses? You see, there has been a lot of buzz in the media. As you can see, there are a lot of articles. There has been a lot of talk about what digital goods lenses are and how they can help creators earn money. As you might know, creators don't make any money off of the lenses they make on Snapchat or, or any other social media platform as of now. So what digital goods lenses are is basically creating unlockable elements inside your lens. I will put up a small video on screen right now so you can see what it looks like. It is basically creating things in your lenses that people can buy using Snap tokens. Snap tokens is nothing but a currency that is used within the Snapchat ecosystem. To give you a hint of costing, 80 tokens cost about 75 rupees which comes down to basically around 1 rupee for each token. So when you're looking at lenses and you're pricing your own lenses, keep that in mind. That is how much people will pay to unlock and use your lenses. As you can see, it is a new way for creators to make money apart from working with clients and using creator rewards, etc. I made a whole video talking about all of these different ways you can make money using Lens Studio. Now coming to digital goods lenses. Uh, in digital goods, there are two types. There is durables and consumables. Durables are basically that which does not run out. People can keep buying it. And consumables is basically you say, I will only sell 10 of these or 20 of these and once 10 or 20 people buy them your lens will stop letting people unlock that specific element now if you go into the documentation there are a lot more details about what digital goods lenses are here is a pricing structure for reference about how many tokens can people buy and there are a lot of things that you can go through now what is important to us to get started is to first understand our eligibility yes there is an eligibility criteria unfortunately you have to be a resident of one of the eligible countries which is this list. I'll link this in the description you Can go through all these countries. You have to be in one of these countries. And if you are in one of these countries, unfortunately, you're not eligible to participate in digital goods lenses. Now, once we come to eligibility again, you have to be 18 years or older. You have to have a Snapchat account that is at least one month old. You have to have a public profile. And then the last point being, you have to have at least 40,000 lens plays or 3000 lens shares within the last month. And once you're eligible for this, will see this digital goods tab in your menu when you go to your my lenses section here i have pu already published a couple of digital goods lenses after i've showed you how to make a digital goods lens we'll come here and look at the analytics of digital goods lenses and what the back end of a digital goods lens looks like now we will come into lens studio and quickly build a digital good lens here you can see there are two templates inside your lens studio i'm using lens studio 4.55 at the moment there are two templates there is digital goods and there is digital goods blueprint. Digital goods blueprint is someone who's trying to build a complex digital goods lens and someone who already knows their way around lens studio. Today we will focus on just the digital goods lens and not the blueprint because I want you to watch this tutorial and build your digital goods lens as soon as possible. So I will click on digital goods and here we have a sample digital goods project. One thing you need to keep in mind is this is a little resource intensive so if you have a slow PC, it might start lagging a little bit. Now, you might see a lot of things and some of you might get intimidated by how many options and buttons there are in the menu. But I will simplify it for you. All you need to focus on are three things. The first thing being everything under the content camera section. That is from here till here. This is the content camera section. And the next thing you need to focus on is a carousel camera section that is from here till here this this is the second thing and the third thing is the digital goods api that you are seeing here okay so these are the three things that you need to build your digital goods lens okay so as you can see we already have a sample project so here you see the carousel camera the five options you see here that is zero through four that is all these options you're seeing here there are five options. You have five options under the carousel. All right. It says edit children. It gives you a hint of what you need to do. There are five options here. There are five options here. Okay. So these five options control five objects under the content camera. So when the first option is picked in the digital goods lens, it is activating the default sweatband is automatically activated now what happens when i switch to the second one 
I won't go into the unlocking mechanism, but what happens when I switch to the second one? It basically deactivates the first object and activates the second object. As simple as that. A basic way carousel works is when you pick an option, it activates the object that is related to that option. And the way you pick the object that the option is linked to is here. When you click on one of these options, you will see a menu here. And in the inspector panel, you will see a field called content. Whatever you put in this is what will be shown and be activated when that option is picked in the carousel. To give you a quick demonstration, what I will do is I'll close this. I'll go under content camera. I will add a scene object. I will make a test content. And under test content, I will add little post effect let's say distortion All right i could have just used the same one but fine. that and what i will do is i will deactivate it because i don't want it to be activated now i want it to be activated when the option is picked so what i will do i will go to index 2 that is the third option in the carousel content I will drag and drop the test content here. All right. So now when I drag to the third option on the carousel, watch what happens. See, if I click unlock, that is what's happening. So that is how it works. You add whatever you want under the content camera. Here you have up to five options and you bring that into the content field of the option. So here I've created five examples for you to look at is just five different post effect. And what I will do is attach these to the options. So for the first one, what you need to understand is that it needs to be activated because that is what people will look at and then decide to scroll and look at what other options are available. So the first one is free. Here you can see the free option. The first one is free. Every other option you have needs to be disabled. So now I have assigned five different effects to five different options in the carousel. Now if we scroll through these, you will notice that all of them have been assigned all the different effects there. So that is a simple mechanism behind how digital goods work. But that is not a digital goods lens yet. This is just a carousel lens so far. What makes it a digital goods lens and what allows you to get paid are two things. The first one is the item skew. Every effect you have, for example, here we have five effects inside this lens. Each one of those needs to have a unique ID. For example, I'll go to the first one. I will take item skew. I will do so because these are all post effects. I will do post effect underscore one. There are no spaces in this, so you uh, make sure you use underscores. I'll go to the second one. Now I assign these names to all these five effects. The next thing I need to do is very, very important. If I don't do this, the entire lens will collapse. It won't work. OK, this is the main step that makes it a digital goods lens the digital goods API. I'll click on this. Here you see these example names. It will replace these with the names of our effect. You don't need to include the first one because it is free. It will include the rest of the four options. So from the second one to the fifth one, this is basically from two to five. Now, make sure it's working. Because what's gonna happen is, if it's not working properly, let's say, Let's take two. Now, if I remove this, if I try to unlock it, it's not going to work. You see? Because this is what makes it a digital goods lens. If you don't do this step right, your lens won't work. So make sure the SKUs, the item SKUs, the tags you, are, you have entered here, match the tags you have entered here. Two. There. Now it works. So I've showed you a demo using post effect. You can use any kind of effect. You can use 
3 d models you can use headbands for example as they have shown here i just shown you how to build it you take content and you link it to the carousel and then you attach it to the digital goods api now there is one more important component to this lens that we need to address that is the images we see in the carousel here because as you can see we have changed our effect but we haven't changed the images in the carousel which is very important obviously now if you go to the carousel camera and instead of clicking on it we expand it you will see this thumbnail folder this is what is controlling what you see here okay so right now it is in 3d mode we can change it to 2d here so if i disable 3d you won't see anything here and if i enable 2d and then if i go here into the image object and drag this here here you see the thumbnail so if you are using a 3d model bring a copy of that 3d mesh under the 3d thumbnail and if you are using a 2d image for thumbnail disable the 3d thumbnail script enable the 2d thumbnail script and bring that image into the image object that is basically how you create the carousel images so now you know the basic workflow for digital good lens you add content you link it to the carousel and then you add thumbnail and then you attach it to the digital goods api now there is one more step that we need to do it is different from what you usually do now if i click on publish lens it will bring me to the publishing process and if i click on my folder and do submit lens you fill out the usual details and at the bottom you will see this digital goods section this is where you need to fill in the details of what those options are here you can see that up to 20 options are allowed in the digital goods lens we have only four so far you can also modify the simple template into creating more options but i didn't go into that because i didn't want to confuse you uh, by giving you too much information in one video here you'll click on complete meta information you can see the unique skews that we set earlier this is very important i will show you why a little bit later when you go into the analytics of what the back end of a digital goods lens looks like now if you click here you will see the skew the type of the digital goods component here it's set to durable you cannot change it here if you want to change it from durable to consumable and want to set a limited quantity you go into digital goods api here you have durable versus consumable if you set to consumable you can enter the quantity here that is where you set it so once you set it and upload it we fill this information so it is durable we set the token quantity and here you can pick what is the price that people will pay to get access to that element in your lens i'll set it for five tokens for now for title i will do post effect distortion post effect distortion the description is mandatory because you have to describe what you're selling to a consumer so for now i'll put in post effect just for placeholder i'll do save and you, once you fill all of these you hit finish and then you hit publish my first couple of lenses digital goods lenses took up to a week that is why i was waiting to do this video i think it's because it is a digital goods lens i think it is undergoing manual review so it's taking a little longer than it takes for usual lenses that is something to keep in mind if you are looking to publish a digital goods lens on a short timeline it might take longer to get approved now if we come into our my lenses section and we go into the digital goods section once you have published your digital goods lenses, you will see all of your elements, digital goods elements listed here as different items. Think of it as inventory. Whenever someone buys something in your lens, let's say my lens has four options to buy, five options, one is free, four to buy. Those four are listed as individual items in my inventory, digital goods inventory. Here you can see there are four items listed here. Each one of those are five tokens and there are descriptions and titles so the reason you need to have a unique id for each and every element in a digital goods lens is because it gets added to this inventory and if two or more of them have the same id they will clash with each other in the back end it might not cause any problems but you won't be able to get the insights of individual purchases for example if someone buys five of one item and three of the other item all you will see is eight of the purchase for that unique id that is why each of your elements needs to have a unique skew attached to it i will show you the insights of one of the digital goods lenses i published so you can understand what the analytics look like so here is a lens called lala looks it is basically a lut look pack that i made a few days ago it has around 100,000 reach all the usual statistics and the only thing different for digital goods lenses apart from the engagement event insight funnel analysis is the monetization tab 
now see what happens when i click here here is the monetization tab it'll show you how many people looked at the options apart from the first option how many people looked at the options that were there that they could purchase around 1200 people looked at the options around 1180 people cancelled the purchase and one person bought it they bought two goods and they spent 10 because one was five tokens so out of 100,000 people one person bought two digital goods from my lens giving me a total of 10 tokens that is what the back end of a digital goods lens looks like this could be very different from what you might get when you publish a digital goods lens you might have more engagement more conversion compared to how much reach you have it depends on the kind of lens you are making i plan to make an in-depth video on how to study this analytics and how to decide what kind of lenses to make based on your audience but that is a different video for this video i wanted to focus on what digital goods lenses are how to make digital goods lenses and how to understand and study your analytic for a digital goods lens i hope that helped you this video was a little unplanned because uh, I saw that a lot of people were curious and confused about digital goods lenses. If you have any questions or if anything was unclear, uh, you can comment and I will try to answer as fast as possible. Even if I don't know the answer, I will try to give you resources that will give you the answer at least. So yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.